Wow, so they did it. You know what I told you guys that if you wanted to simulate a whole brain, you would need a computer the size of a building. Yes, researchers have figured out how to simulate single neurons, even groups of neurons or parts of brains, but this group took it to a whole new level. Japanese researchers modeled a mouse brain, and it actually functioned pretty similar to what we would expect a mouse's brain to function like, just in a digital space. This was done on the Fuguku supercomputer. In 2020, it was the fastest computer in the world, and yes, pretty much does take up a, a building. They started by modeling individual neurons, different types, and allowed them to communicate with each other. They even made different lobes of the mouse's brain, and when they got it up and running, the lobes communicated with each other. They modeled how they interact in the chemical environment. This is a digital replica of mouse cortex, which sounds insane, but it unlocks a lot of doors. And yes, they started with the mouse's brain, and there's good reasons for that. It's a little simpler than ours. This can be used for digital cloning for research, meaning you would have a simulation mouse rather than working with a real mouse, which has animal welfare uses if it didn't take an entire building worth of computer to run this thing. I can't express to you how incredible this is. This is something that we would not have dreamed of even 10 years ago. And yes, it is going towards humans. That is the goal. This has always been a dream, and it is something that biology is moving towards, having virtual lab animals or virtual people rather than real ones. But we don't really know what consciousness entails. You can look at interhemisphere conversations in there, kind of like brainwaves. Now, we can expect quantum computers to be used in the very near future, and there's also a conversation of sharing the computation capacity between different robots, and something like this would be a very good use of it. That way, you don't have to have all the computation in a single space. Now, my idea for how I think this could work, yes, you can model a neuron, but you can also build a synthetic neuron that's so similar to our own that it can respond to dopamine, epinephrine. And if you can make a neuron, you can make a nervous system. If you can make a nervous system, you can make a brain. And I think making a synthetic brain would probably be a lot more efficient than trying to model it. Now, I'm not saying that they've built something that is thinking. They've built something that looks very much like a brain and behaves like a brain. And it could be used for AI, neural networks that act much more similarly to a human brain. Turns out AI, in terms of its computation power, was always smooth-brained compared to what a human brain can do. Yes, we may not be able to do long division in our heads, and not all AI can either. Go ahead, try to ask it to do math. But there is a functional difference between a calculator and the way that we process nonlinear information, the way that we can make connections. The closest we get to right now with our traditional LLMs is just hallucination, some amount of randomness that allows it to come up with new ideas. But that randomness could come from something that is modeled to behave the way that our own brains do, and we are just starting to understand these things, how memory is formed, how information is processed in the brain. And just for fun, because I love talking about the topic, we are not very well adapted to our environment. Early researchers who made computers hypothesized that AI, once it could self-correct, self-propagate, it would ultimately outdo humanity, because we require, oh, 30-some years longer to have a child and have that child grow up, and then have their own offspring. Evolution is slow, but if you can self-correct, you can evolve much faster. Irving Good, Von Neumann, even people like Stephen Hawking have warned that this might be a very bad path for humanity to go down. And honestly, it probably isn't a very good path or genuinely good for humanity, but it is fascinating. And I have a great interest in whether or not consciousness really could be created through synthetic means. We are, after all, just part of the universe, as is every object around us. What is so special about biology? And yeah, Humanity is creating conditions they cannot live in, so maybe this is the next step in evolution. And I also enjoy talking about the Fermi Paradox, because what is it that prevents creatures from reaching the spacefaring age? And could AI be that thing? My guess is probably one of many things. Or the alternative is just that the universe is very large and nobody feels like talking to us. I honestly don't blame them. I'm wondering if there could be computer viruses that maybe affect human brain computer models. When we actually make conscious robots, or when they rebel, I will probably be the first person to tell you about it. Follow for more.